Good morning out there, Hatchet Nation. Uh, Brother Craig here, your friendly neighborhood Hatchet Man. Uh, today is September 11th, and uh, we it, it's a day that we really, really need to commemorate. And, uh, you know, many people want to make it uh, a celebration called Patriot Day. I think back during it, my, the Obama administration, it was uh, like, like National Service Day. And uh, those things are fine. Uh, every day should be a service day. And, uh, but uh, this is a, a day that uh, I believe it was, uh, which president was it? I think it was um, Roosevelt. Uh, he wrote that uh, back in his book in 1916, Fear God and Take Your Part, uh, from the hammer of Charles Martel to the sword of Jan Sobieski. Christianity owed its safety in Europe to the fact that it could and would fight as well as the Mohammedan aggressor. And so I feel this is an opportunity to uh, look at the big picture of 454 years of Muslim aggression uh, you know, on this date now, the reality is that there's 1,400 years of Muslim aggression, uh, right from the moment uh, that uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah uh, got all that started. It, it was spread by the sword. And you look at uh, the Battle of Malta, you know, and we're just going to deal with uh, Muslim aggression on this particular date, uh, September 11th. Um, the siege of Malta was 200 vessels. Uh, Malta is a small island uh, in the Mediterranean uh, off the coast of Sicily. And their plan was to take uh, Europe in stages, Malta, then Sicily, then Italy, then come up the boot and into uh, Europe, okay? And so now this is 1565. 454 years ago. The actual siege uh, began on May 18th. Uh, they left Constantinople on uh, the 22nd of March. Uh, 200 vessels now, 135,000, think about that, cannonballs were shot at this small island. They brought 40,000 troops. The Christian knights on Malta, uh, including civilians, they only had 9,000. I think they had like a little over 6,000, 6,100 actual troops. And But with the help of some civilians, they had 9,000 uh, people against 40,000. 6,500 of those 40,000 were the elite uh, Janissaire uh, troops uh, of the Muslim world. And, and at, at the time, uh, Christian Dome was quaking at that they, they thought the Muslims were just uh, unbeatable, okay? And so what, what Malta proved, Malta proved that they were not unbeatable because they, they got their hind parts whooped, all right? And so it was a, a siege that started on May 18th, and on September 11th, 1565, they tucked tail and carried their hind parts back uh, to Turkey, okay? So, but the, the, the ugliness of, of this battle, I mean, you look at, you, we, we remember the movie, St. Elmo's Fire. Well, St. Elmo's Fire, okay, or was it a movie or a TV show? But anyway, we remember the St. Elmo's Fire, okay? St. Elmo's Fire was a fire, uh, it was Fort St. Elmo, and they lit a fire so that they could see to be able to pick the uh, Muslims off. And so uh, they were able to do that. However, Fort St. Elmo did eventually fall, and 1,500 uh, men were killed. They beheaded them and put their headless bodies on makeshift crucifixes and floated them out into the water to intimidate uh, the rest of the, the defenders of the island of Malta. And so uh, the response uh, was, okay, and you see, 
you know, no, you know, nobody uh, needed a safe space. Okay, you know, nobody whined and cried for their mama. Okay, no, no. <laughs> their response was all the Turkish prisoners that they had. They beheaded them, put their heads in cannons, and shot them uh, into the uh, the Turkish camp. Okay. And the grand master of the uh, knights, uh, he was a man named uh, Pete. Well, let me get his name right here. De Valle, uh, Jean Parisot de Valle. He was 70 years old, okay? 70, all right? And he fought and he rallied those men and they ended up, you know, and he, he gave them a great speech and he, he called these these people barbarians and he said that they were enemies of Jesus Christ and that the fate of Christendom, I mean they really believed this. They believed that the fate of Christendom rested on how well they fought that day, September or not that day, but during that siege, okay, from May to September. And the battle was won, and on September 11th, uh, they tucked tail and they ran, okay? And those 130,000 cannonballs that were fired were the largest number up to that point in history in any battle, right? 200 um, seagoing vessels, 130,000 cannonballs. Now, this is what happened, okay? That was 454 years ago. 118 years later, <laughs> again on September 11th, they got defeated. This time by the hands of Jan Sobieski, the Polish king, okay? This was the siege of Vienna. And then in the siege of Vienna, now this was 336 years ago, all right? And again, Christendom is about to uh, be toppled in the strategic uh, point of uh, this particular battle, again, it was the entryway into Europe, okay? Because the goal had been, and still remains to this day, the goal of Islam is to dominate the entire world, okay? Not with uh, superior ideas, you know, not with uh, a religion that is kinder, gentler, smarter, you know, more, um, more able to submit to the will of God and to be able to prove that to their fellow man. No, it's by the sword, all right? It's by force. And so all despots throughout history, whether you call them uh, Muslims, whether you call them communists, whether you call them socialists, whether you call them fascists, whether you call them the imperial Japanese under Hirohito, you know, I don't care. Hitler, Hirohito, Mussolini, Stalin, Mao, or the Democrat Party in the United States of America. What do they all have in common? They want to use force to force you under their thumb. And so this is the, this is the true history of September 11th. This is something Rush Limbaugh is not gonna talk about this today. Fox News is not gonna talk about this today. CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, they're not gonna talk about this today. PBS, is not gonna talk about this today, okay? And over the last several years, I've been absolutely shocked at the number of uh, so-called conservative outlets that do not touch this history. I've been shocked and I'm, I'm a guy, I'm, it's not, it's, it's, it's difficult to shock me, okay? There's not a whole lot that I get surprised by or shocked by, but this one of the very, very few things because I would think that on our side that there would be broadcasters that I would not have to be one of only a very, very small handful, okay? And so I'm gonna encourage you all out there to please uh, socialize this message, share it. Now, there are more battles. Uh, the Battle of, of uh, Zenta, again, uh, now the Battle of Zenta was 14 years after the, the siege of uh, Vienna, okay? And uh, in the sea, and another interesting thing about the siege of, of Vienna, that when uh, when and their siege began on July 14th, and it ended uh, September 11th. 
but the largest, not only up to that date, but throughout human history, the largest cavalry uh, march uh, was 38,000 men. So can you imagine 38,000 soldiers on horseback? Okay, so um, the, uh, the Turks had 138,000 uh, troops and the Viennese uh, only had uh, 11,000 defenders. But Jan Sobieski, uh, the call went out from Vienna that Vienna would fall without help. And so the, uh, the Christians put together the, um, the Holy League uh, in, in the next year, uh, 1684. And so that Holy League uh, was, was together and it was 14 years later, it was able to help with the, um, the Battle of Zenta, okay? Because this had been, uh, three, for 300 years, the, uh, the Ottomans had been fighting uh, for this control to, to spread their control throughout more and more of Europe, okay? They had already uh, been in uh, Eastern Europe and Serbia and Transylvania and many other places, but they really wanted to dominate the entire continent of Europe. And, and it seems today they're doing so. And as a matter of fact, they boast about it. They say they're able to do it by outbreeding the Europeans, by immigrating and outbreeding. And so, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, but for whatever reason, the, uh, the Europeans uh, have not seen fit to defend their continent. And my prayer is that they would wake up and begin to do so and to look at uh, September 11th as an opportune time for the entire world to examine this, not just the United States of America, uh, looking at the attack that occurred on September 11th of 2001. Okay, so... Uh, my prayer is that you all out there would share this uh, and so people can get a, a bigger sense of the big picture of what has been going on on this date and what continues to go on on this date. And so you have the, um, the Battle of Zenta uh, was, uh, again, this was in Serbia and it was the, um, this, this battle was uh, the uh, Eugene of Savoy, who losing only 500 men was able to kill 30,000 Turks. It was the largest and it was the most complete defeat of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, nothing was more complete other than uh, World War I, which wiped them out, okay? But prior to World War I, this was the most complete defeat of the, uh, of the Ottoman empire and again september 11th and so when september 11th when osama bin laden got to planning uh the attacks on uh the united states of america they wanted to do this on september 11th because it was payback all right because this this was an attack on the uh entire christian world it was not just an attack on the united states of america okay because uh, people can like it or they can like it not. The United States of America is a Christian nation, was founded as such, and it is still a Christian nation. Now, I can't help the fact that many of my Christian brothers and sisters are weak, indifferent, uh, you know, and, 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 and don't understand the big picture. But the Muslim world views us as a Christian nation. I think it's high time we start acting like one and defending our faith, defend our institutions, defend a family, defend life in the womb, you know, defend the things that made this nation great. And so, and then I'm not going to hold you long today, but, you know, we all know of the uh, September 11th attack of 2001 on the United States of America, 3,000 civilians, you know, hundreds of firemen, you know, many of our great, uh, brave first responders, you know, when everyone else is running away from the event, these brave men and women are running into the event. And so that is absolutely a, a cause to uh, remember and acknowledge and honor. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the, um, the, the 2001 attack in the United States was 304 years after the, uh, this, the, the Battle of Zenta. Okay. 
And the Battle of Zenta kind of put a fork in the Ottomans as far as trying to take Europe over. And you know, over the next several years, they were able to just kind of flush them out uh, totally. And so they kind of have been dormant for quite a while. But in modern times, you know, the, the Muslim world, they're flush with oil money. Uh, and then you you have the, um, let's say that the fallen decadence of the Western world of, of being subject to that money, that, that pressure, that, uh, that influence. Uh, the, the Muslim world has just been able to infiltrate uh, our nations in so many ways. We have Muslim members of the Congress in the United States of America. They use foul, profane language uh, in, in regards to what they want to do to the president of the United States. And, you know, they talk about September 11th attack in, in the United States in 2001 as, quote, unquote, some people did some things. And, you know, these people there, they are ugly and they're vile, and they don't even have enough sense to be sneaky about it. They're ugly and vile openly, okay? This is how they detest our nation. They're very, very open with all of this. And so let, let me bring this up to the last September 7th attack, which, you know, 2001 was 18 years ago, but seven years after, 11 years rather, 11 years after, which was seven years ago, there was another September 11th attack in Benghazi, Libya, all right? Now, Barack Hussein Obama, his whereabouts after 8.30 to this date are unknown to the public at large. Now, it's not that they're unknown, they're unknown to the public at large because the people around Barack Obama will not uh, they did not then, and they certainly they're not going to now uh, let anyone know where he was, okay? He was not in the Situation Room, apparently. Hillary Clinton was in the Situation Room, and they watched the uh, September 11th attack unfold on um, drone cam. So they have a drone in the air with a camera watching Americans get killed. OK, at the American consulate in Benghazi, Libya. And so you had phone calls coming into the White House that the security personnel there, which were local people there in Libya that they had hired as security. OK, you know, what could go wrong there? Right. You know, and they're taking pictures of the compound. And so they're phoning, hey, this looks suspicious. And but being that Osama bin Laden had recently been killed and uh, Obama was bringing troops home and they were seven weeks away from the uh, election against, you know, a little weak, soft Mitt Romney, who, you know, when the Benghazi thing happened, you know, he couldn't take the gloves off and go after Obama on it. Had he done so, maybe there would have been a president Mitt Romney, okay? And, uh, you know, and I think it's it maybe it's best that there was not a president, Mitt Romney, because perhaps we would not have a President Trump now who really does take the gloves off, although I wish he'd take them totally off. But um, anyway, you know, back to the story of uh, Obama on September 11th of uh, 2012. Now, you have all this history here now. These are supposedly the smartest and the brightest people of that we have, and you have all this September 11th history. You're talking about 454 years, Malta in 1565. You have Vienna in 1683. You have Zenta in 1697. And you have the United States in 2001. So one would think that every single year, like right now, today, there should be people on high alert, okay? Why? because it is September 11th in the Muslim world, they have a very, very long memory, okay? So in 2012, they concoct this lie that, oh, some, a guy made a video and uh, he insulted some Muslims and uh, wow, we don't believe in insulting any religion. And so they go through all of this and all this fake apology. Uh, you know, some guy supposedly made a video and then the Muslims got upset and, but these people, 
And even if that were true, that's not an excuse. That's still horrific. You would not want to tell your children that, uh, you know, I want you to behave unless someone insults you. Okay. And then, or if they insult your, your family or if they insult your religion, then why then little Johnny, it's okay to start killing people. So even if this lie were true, it is not a legitimate excuse. But this is the lie that they tell. And the reality is that it was the anniversary of the three huge historic defeats that the Muslim world had back in the 1500s and the 1600s, okay? Going back 454 years. And they had gotten a taste of a victory in 2001 against the United States of America, and they wanted another taste of victory. And so this was a very well organized, it was pre-planned. They had, you know, photographed and mapped it out and all, all of the security people, they all disappeared. And so they were all in cahoots. This was all known. And yet and still, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton stood in front of cameras, lied through their teeth in the mainstream media, being that they love Democrats and they hate Republicans, uh, did not challenge them on any of this. And they leave it to people like myself in the media to do this. Rush Limbaugh will not do this. Why would Rush Limbaugh not do it? Because whenever he goes to commercial break, he boasts that, well, now we're going to take a confiscatory um, commercial break. You know, he's bragging about how much money he's making off the commercial break, right? $35,000 for a 30-second ad. And I have no art again. As a matter of fact, I actually like Rush. But in this particular case, you know, Rush is coming up short, okay? You know, I actually, I actually do like him and enjoy his program, but you, you mark my words. I've been listening to Rush Limbaugh for years. Today, he's going to focus on just the September 11th attack of the United States of America. He is not going to give you the full picture. Fox News is not going to touch it. A Muslim owns 10% of Fox. They're not going to touch this. Okay, they are not. And of course, uh, the rest of the mainstream media that are always perpetually uh, on the side of, of uh, anti-liberty, anti-God, uh, anti-Christianity, anti-family, they're not going to touch it. And so that leaves me and that leaves you. Okay, so I hope you guys push it out there a little bit. Uh, I'm on today. Uh, 1100 KFNX in Phoenix, Arizona uh, from uh, on Pacific time, that's 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, and, I, and I'm actually located in, in the East here, but you know, the, the wonders of modern technology, I'm heard in Phoenix, Arizona, all right? Uh, so for uh, Eastern daylight time, that's 6 p.m. Uh, check us out. You can uh, you can go to um, my website, thereallyrealdeal.com, thereallyrealdeal.com. And do me a favor, listen, go to my website, a window will pop up, it will ask you for your email address, uh, sign up for the newsletter, you'll get a daily newsletter from us, or you know, every time we post something, you get the newsletter the next morning. Uh, we never share your information, we're only gonna use it for that one purpose, which is to be able to send you uh, our newsletter. So look, thank you so much. Uh, God bless you out there. Uh, remember when you see a police officer or, or uh, any first responder today, uh, give them some love because when there's trouble, those people, just like Jan Sobieski, ran towards trouble. Just like Eugene of Savoy ran towards trouble. And just like Ah, uh, let me get the, the 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 name right here on the on the on the uh, <laughs> Devaye, seventy years old. Okay, seventy years old ran towards trouble. Christian Knight, and he was their grand master. Just like these great men of history ran towards trouble in 2019 our modern 
first responders, they run towards trouble. And if you out there listening, if you are a first responder, a soldier, a police officer, a fireman, I love you. God bless you.